Hello, folks. This is Joe from My Geek Scene. I'm here at Cherry Capital Comic Con here with Ming Chen again. What's up, everybody? For those of you who don't know, Ming is a podcaster, actor, TV star, <laughs> and as of lately, a wedding officiator. Yes, that's correct. How's that been for you? Uh, I was great. I had two friends asked me to officiate their wedding on, on May the 4th, and uh, first time officiating. So uh, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, you can go online. You can get ordained. You can uh, legally perform marriages. And uh, while it wasn't like an all-out geek wedding, uh, you know, the May the 4th date was picked specifically. And uh, the two people getting married were, hu in fact, huge geeks. So I, uh, it, it was a delicate balance between, you know, official wedding ceremony and throwing in a bunch of geek references. And I, and I think, I, uh, I, think I, I balanced it pretty well. And uh, everybody seemed pretty happy. Very nerve-wracking, though. Okay. Wedding, big, big, um, big event. You don't want to screw it up. Um, you don't want to go overboard with the geek stuff, but uh, you know it's, it's subtle. You know, I wore, of course, I wore a suit and a tie, but I had an Infinity Gauntlet lapel pin, which a lot of people commented on. You know, very subtle. So I think it went well. I would do it again. So anybody out there, if you need a uh, an officiant who you know who can kind of mix the geek and and the romantic, uh, give me a call. No, that's fair. I mean, the last time I talked to you, I went through all the hours of research and stuff like that. But this time, <laughs> I wanted a more casual approach to work off of stuff. So why did Matt Fraction's Hawkeye speak to you? That's a great question. I don't... I think he's just kind of like a real guy. I, I, Clint Barton, Hawkeye, doesn't have any superpowers. He just shoots a bow and arrow real good. So uh, as such, he's also a flawed human being as well. And... Uh, so I, I related to him as a, a guy, it takes place in, uh, actually it takes place in New Jersey. So um, there was one issue, that, there were two issues that spoke specifically to me. One was a Hurricane Sandy issue uh, okay. in which basically the whole eastern seaboard in New Jersey got flooded. With um, the dad and the son? Uh, yes, yeah, exactly. And, uh, and you know, him going to rescue them and, and uh, you know, he's kind of moving their valuables around and, uh, you know, it basically saves their lives. And... Um, that spoke to me as uh, Mike Zapsik and uh, Walt Flang and two guys who were on the show with me. Two of my good friends also were affected where their houses were flooded. Mike, Mike had to totally rebuild his whole house. Oh, uh, Walt went that. through uh, about a year of renovation. And uh, just, you know, as a, as a, I, you know, luckily I was fine. I think Brian John Johnson was fine. The store was fine. Uh, we actually did a podcast at the store the day after the hurricane hit. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, the store is on the same grid as the hospital. So our electricity came back immediately. And oh. It uh, it was the only way, you know, there in, in a kind of a helpless uh, situation. You know, there was nothing we could do in terms of uh, you know saving our houses or saving anybody else for that matter. Uh, the only other thing we could do is kind of podcast about it and talk about it, and uh, it was uh, it was kind of a it was kind of a good outlet. Um, but uh, you know that 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 hit all of us uh, in different ways personally, and I thought that was, they translated that into a comic book really well. Uh, the second episode was the Lucky the Pizza Dog issue, okay, where yes. everything's told through the perspective and the voice of a dog's thoughts. So, uh, if Lucky, uh, Lucky's Clint, Lucky's Hawkeye's dog, if he smelled pizza, you saw a piece of pizza. If you uh, if you walked by two people arguing, you saw a little two heads arguing. I, I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know that uh, anything like that had ever really been done um, since Larry Hama's uh, GI Joe Twenty Three, the silent issue, really. So I thought that was pretty innovative. Um, but then, uh, so there are actually two Hawkeyes. Uh, there's Clint Barton, but there's Kate Bishop, who is featured heavily in the, in the Hawkeye Marvel Now series. Uh, I think she's even cooler than Clint Barton, and uh, she, she gives him a lot of crap. She keeps him in line. Uh, she's also out there saving people's pe saving people, and uh, you know, being being a great superhero. And uh, I, I have female friends that give me crap all the time, so I related to that relationship as well. Where you know they they're not romantically involved. They're they're partners. They're friends. Uh, they work together, but they also have to keep each other in line. So, just yeah, just little little. It, it's, I don't think it's one big thing about that series that I relate to. It's like a million little things that Matt Fraction has written in there that I think is just brilliant and genius. Okay. Besides the obvious GI Joe, what were your Saturday morning cartoons of choice? Oh man, uh, Super Friends definitely. I, I woke up. Uh, Super Friends would air I think at six thirty in the morning in Jackson, Michigan, where I grew up. And so I would get up right at six and catch. There was some crappy show that aired beforehand, and I would have to sit through that. Uh, I, I think it's called Mr. Moon's Magic Circus or something. I don't know. If, I, I, nothing very memorable, but I would sit through that just to get to the Super Friends. And I, uh, yeah, I, I, I remember, you know, the beginning. 
you see the whole lineup: uh, Superman, Batman, and Robin, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, the Wonder Twins. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, later on, like Apache Chief. I was like, "Who's this guy? I don't remember him in the comics." And that's because he wasn't in the comics. Oh, they made him specifically for the TV show. Um, so I don't think we'll be seeing Apache Chief pop up in the Justice League per, per se. But you never know. That'd be cool if they made a Apache Chief reference. Um, and um, yeah, beyond that, uh, I was just talking about this uh, in the late '80s. There was a really great Dungeons and Dragons Saturday morning cartoon called Dungeons and Dragons about a bunch of kids. They go through a carnival ride and they get teleported to the Dungeons and Dragons land and they have to fight uh, Avenger. And uh, each, each one of them takes on a, a Dungeons and Dragons character, a, a, a thief, a mage, uh, a warrior, a barbarian. And uh, I was playing D&D at the time. So I was like, whoa, this is like, this is really cool. And uh, yeah, it only lasted, I think, one season. There's maybe 20 episodes. Uh, but that show lives on. Uh, I think Sideshow is doing a whole statue series that I want. However, if I were to get all of them, it's it's well over a thousand dollars. So so I'm gonna have hmm. to save my money or uh, really hustle at conventions or something because I I really want that statue set. Um, I'm trying to remember. Um, I was really into. There was a Mr. T cartoon. I don't know if you remember that one. Um, there was this really weird trippy cartoon about a Ru- the Rubik's cube when the Rubik's cube was popular. Okay. Uh, 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 the premise was uh, Rubik, the cube, is actually an alien from another planet, and it was anthropomorphic. It talked and helped these two kids like solve crimes and stuff. But every every episode, they would drop Rubik, and it would get all messed up, and that and then he wouldn't be alive anymore. So they're like, "Oh my God, we gotta we gotta make the colors back." It was it was, yeah. I mean, it was I, weird. I mean, I know uh, a good port, part of uh, Saturday Mark. Saturday morning cartoons was like to sell merchandise yeah. and stuff like that. But oh, it was all to sell merchandise or sell a video game. So uh, there was a Pac-Man cartoon. Like everything was tied into merch. It, it, was, it was all an ad for something. But do you feel that kids uh, today are missing out on a cool Saturday morning cartoons? Oh, yeah. Oh, by far, yeah. I, I, I think kids now just sleep until 11 o'clock. And there was, there's no, there was no reason to wake up early on Saturday anymore. Like, I, I, I specifically set my alarm for 6 a.m. every Saturday so I could catch cartoons from 6 a.m. to about 11 and then I would start my day so I'd really sit there you know the bowl of cereal the uh or multiple bowls of cereal and just for five hours on Saturday it would be all cartoons I mean it's like I felt like they tried harder back in the 80s and 90s I mean because like about like for like the kids state where are the cool theme songs yeah where are the cereals that match the show or yeah. the plethora of there, toys? there aren't there aren't any really um I guess, you know, there are a couple of properties on Netflix that maybe kids watch, uh, which is cool. I, uh, this, is why, this is why I love Stranger Things so much. Is, uh, I mean, Stranger Things does have a few yeah, video I think, games. Yeah, I think Stranger Things spoke to a wide audience, but uh, kids, uh, are, uh, the kids really loved it uh, because they related to the Stranger Things kids. And we loved it because they were doing the stuff uh, that, like, you know, Dustin and, and Mike and, and Will on their bikes riding through the neighborhood. Yes. Playing D&D. That was me. I was a kid in the basement. Uh, you know, freaking out that, you know, if we were going to fireball or cast protection, that was me. And they're riding home afterwards and, uh, you know, uh, riding home, maybe getting threatened by some unseen demogorgon. That was that was me. So I related to all of that. But my my kids relate to them as well. So it was kind of a great cross generational show. So something like that, I think, kind of brought back that feel, per se, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, while it wasn't on specifically on Saturday morning, um, you know, they could. You know, well, now you don't need that. You just go on to Netflix and, and watch something. But you're right. Without that, yeah, there, there's, uh, you know, if I ask my kids, you know, what's your favorite cartoon theme song? Uh, what's your favorite cartoon even? I, I don't even know if they would come up with a solid answer. I mean, I it's remember, sad. I remember eating, like, the uh, Ghostbusters cereal. Oh, yeah. And it had the cool holographic uh, yep. Slimer. Yeah. Like, right in on the uh, bo- front box of the cereal. Yeah, there was like that, that. Ba- the Batman 89 cereal. Uh, certain boxes came with a cereal bowl, like, shrink wrapped to the back of it. So there was this big bulge. In the back of the oh, box. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, oh, yes. Yeah, I don't, I don't, do kids even eat sugar cereal anymore? Because we're all in this health kick now. And, um, you know, I don't, do kids eat, yeah, like, the, I, I remember, like. I would, like, wa- say yes. I wanted the prizes. You know, I, and I, I would cheat. I would buy a box of cereal. I would dump it out until the prize came out. Dude, I forgot all about that. Yeah, it's like they don't even oh, do prizes so much cool. anymore. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's sad. Now maybe you get mail away or I guess you go down on a website now and you redeem, you know, a code or something. And, uh, yeah, I want, like, you know, my little plastic whistle or, or uh, uh, my little submarine that you put baking soda in. And it would die. Yeah, stuff like that is uh, – that's, that's my childhood, man. And I, if they're not doing that anymore, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're in for a hell of a time, I think. Okay. 
Uh, last time we talked, you were starting to watch Attack on Titan and yes. One Punch Man. Thoughts right. on the series? Uh, uh, brilliant. Bro, I, I love the Japanese just take what we do and they do it better. <laughs> so Depends so. on the... I would, I would agree with you to an extent. It depends on like what we're talking about. Yeah, well, I just... Animation in general, I think uh, they've oh, really, you know, idea. they put way, way more thought, way more art, artistry, way more creativity, the, and the stories too. Uh, I mean, in general, like you know, things like that. Ghost in the Shell, like I'll uh, go back to like Golgo Thirteen. They're more, they're grittier, they're more adult, but they're also deeper and they're more memorable, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, I've not finished One Punch Man. I think a new season's coming out, correct? It's yeah, already like, started. Okay, it already started. But at least finish uh, season one. It's only 13 episodes. Okay. And the animation keeps topping itself. Dude, I know you're super busy yeah. with your businesses and whatnot. Yeah, I think Attack on Titan's been uh, uh, really it's amazing. It's now in season three. And, um, and then I'll, I'll extend even, uh, I, well, I haven't seen the movie yet, uh, Battle Angel Alito. Uh, I started reading the, the, the manga. How's and, that uh, been for you? Uh, amazing. It's, my, it's pretty mind-blowing, uh, just everything going on in there. And there aren't. There aren't a ton of words, really. It's a lot of action and uh, not a ton of words. And, uh, you know, I was getting used to reading whatever right to left again, which actually makes a lot more sense flow wise, I believe, because, you know, you're turning the pages this this way and reading uh, linearly. Um, yeah, we should we should go toward that, in my opinion. I mean, have you um, seen uh, I mean, so you're working on the first series? Yes. Yeah. Okay, because there's actually... Yeah, I know there's, what, eight volumes or something? Uh, nine. Nine, okay. And then there's the second series, Last Order. Oh, um, man, okay. And then there... I have a lot of catching up to do. He's working on the final arc, uh, which is uh, oh, Mars man. Chronicles. Okay, that's um, cool. I hope we get more movies, though. I haven't seen the movie. Yeah, I haven't either. I, I heard it was pretty amazing, and I know James Cameron doesn't mess around. It's been kind of... They've been working on this for a while. And, have you watched uh, anything else anime-wise? Uh, I have not. Since then? I have not. If you have some recommendations you want to throw out, I'm well, always, uh, I mean, I'm always up for it. One Punch Man, obviously, is, there, is a take on the superhero genre. Um, if you're into superheroes, uh, I would definitely recommend My Hero Academia. Okay, right, yeah. Yeah, it's weird. I go to these conventions. I meet the voice actors and actresses, and they're amazing. Oh, they're nice, They're just too. cool people. A good portion and then, of them. Uh, so it's kind of fun watching them work, get to work, like do what they do best in, you know, in their profession later on. And all right, as we're wrapping this up, uh, you let's talk about the shared universe. Okay. Uh, that's your <laughs> business. What is the shared universe? Shared universe is a recording studio built specifically for podcastings and podcasters. So uh, a lot of people are like, well, the show's over. What are you going to do now? And so um, I went back to uh, a very famous Kevin Smith quote. It was like, just life is short, man. Do, do, do what you love. And maybe that's probably not attributed just to him. I think a lot of people have said that. But he, he was a guy who acted on it. He... Loved writing, loved movies, bam, became a filmmaker. Loved to talk, became a podcaster. Uh, loved to go around and talk, talk to people. So we started doing Q&As around the country. And uh, so I, I was like, wait, I love podcasting. Um, if you watch Comic Book Men, uh, we're, we were the first show to feature podcasting in any mass media format uh, in which uh, you know, we were intercut be, 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 uh, to five of us being a podcast table. Um, and uh, so me and Mike were, we have so much fun podcasting. Just every, each and every show is, is like a party. Mm, nice. And we were kind of like, can, and, and I know, and we were like, well, I know Kevin started us on all this. And I know he has this much fun too. Will this fun, can we spread this fun to other people? Will other people, if we show them how to do this, will they have as much fun as we do? And we're like, well, why wouldn't they? It's just, that's, that's just how it is. Podcasting is immense fun. So we're like, why don't we just, why don't we build a whole studio where we can teach people how to do this? And then once they learn uh, the ropes, they can come back every week and continue their shows. And then they'll spread it to their friends. And uh, we can even get businesses to come in here to promote uh, what they do. And, uh, you know, small businesses especially because uh, anyone starting their own individual small business definitely has a passion for it. You don't, <laughs> you don't suffer that much uh, if you don't love it. And uh, so we want, I mean, our, really what it boils down to, we want people to talk about their passions, whether it be the Avengers, comic books, lightsabers, or running a small business. That's, that's the kind of voice we want um, coming into the studio. And uh, yeah, we opened up uh, um, New Year's Day 2018. And uh, yeah, we were about a year and a half in and it's going pretty well. We've discovered that uh, that question we had, will people have this much fun doing it? The answer is yes. They're they're having a, a, as much fun as we are, if not more. So it's a uh, it's pretty cool. I, I and I, I love the medium. I love that uh, something like this, uh, you know, stre uh, streaming, 
uh, video, you know, putting YouTube, creating YouTube videos or doing a podcast, there's really no barriers. Uh, you can pretty much do or say whatever you want. And I, I, nice. I love that. I love that. That's, uh, you know, we talk about America and the First Amendment, you know, the freedom of speech. But in mass media, there, you're not really free to say, say whatever you want. There are constraints. Uh, whether it be time, language, content, mm -hmm. uh, but for podcasting, uh, YouTube, for the most part, and uh, and streaming, um, there really are no rules to what you you, you know that your limit is is you're, you're you're your own limit in that, and uh, there are no barriers anymore. There you don't have to go to pricey schools, you don't have to audition, uh, none of that. You you turn on a camera, you you use your cell phone if you want to, and and start broadcasting live. It's pretty cool. Nice. And if people wanted to find out more about you online, where could they go? Uh, the website is ashareduniverse.com. Uh, that's also Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And uh, you can follow me as well. I'm at mingchen37, M-I-N-G-C-H-E-N 37. All right. And final question. What would you like to say to your fans throughout all the years? All right. Oh, man. Jeez. Thank you for watching the show, first of all. If, uh, you know, if, if you've been following, either, if, whether you've watched one episode or all 96, uh, thank you. Thank you for coming to conventions, uh, if you've uh, if I've been to your city, you've you've come out specifically to uh, hang out or say hello to me. Thank you for that, and uh, just thank you for being a geek. Because uh, when we were kids, we didn't we didn't have these big, huge comic cons uh, in every city. Um, I had to go out and find fellow fans of whatever I was into, and it was a it's a, it was tough. It was tough. Uh, sometimes it, it was like a Lord of the Rings type journey. Sometimes finding somebody else who knew who Wolverine and Professor X was it just wasn't that widespread but once you found that friend uh, you know uh, it, it was great but now I can just we can go to a con and there's 5,000 people uh, who know who Wolverine and Professor X, X is can tell you their backstories can tell you uh, their current stories and know all about them and, and, and it's great so uh, I thank you guys for being geeks all right well Ming thank you so much for thank this you. interview folks this is Joe from my geek scene at the Cherry Capital Comic Con with Ming Chen take it easy